We're approaching the Warner Brothers booth at Comic-Con, and there's a dance party going on. Oh, there's Scooby-Doo. I've never been to the con before. It's been mind-blowing. I did see a moment of the dance party. I was gonna get jiggy with it and decided probably not good. Next year, don't even hesitate. Just okay. jump in and do your thing. Oh, that's good. That won't be a YouTube video or anything. My kids will totally be proud of that moment. My name is Mitch Watson. I'm a producer and story editor on Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. And I'm Tony Cervoni. I'm also a producer on Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. They live in a town called Crystal Cove, and Crystal Cove is the most haunted town in the world. And because of that, it's a huge tourist attraction. And people come there from all over the place just to spend a night in a haunted hotel and to go on a ghost tour. And that's kind of how the town makes its money. It's kind of how the town exists. It's huge and it's booming and everybody is making money off of it. The only thing that's messing up the business is these four kids and their talking dog who keep disproving that these things are actually supernatural. If you look at the monsters that were in that in the classic Scooby-Doo Where Are You episodes, they're really inventive. You know, you have the 10,000 volt ghost and you know, Charlie the Robot and the Space Coop. The Minor 49er. They're all classic, you know, 40 years later we could still remember every one of those monsters. And we're like, hey, we have to come up with new monsters that stand up to those cool old guys. It's a man crab, which is a giant, you know, crab thing, slime beast, which is this weird sort of skeletal thing that drips and oozes slime. We have were gators, half human, half alligators. You're laughing and being frightened at the same time. We have paid particular attention to, obviously, the physical gags. They still love to eat. They are still scared of their own shadow. It's now not only going to appeal to, you know, the younger kids who were there to see Scooby and the slapstick and the comedy and all this there, but now older kids are going to be able to get into it, too, because we've created this mythology and this environment that will interest them as well. Solving mysteries is cool, and, and watching the show and seeing how the clues come together and how things are laid out is exciting and fun. A kid could watch the show and solve the mysteries along with the game. It's all the kind of stuff that makes Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. We honor the tradition of the show, but we are making some changes and we're adding some new things. In the first episode, we introduced the fact that Velma and Shaggy are having a secret romance. Ow! Yes! Could you please do the Shaggy voice? We start high and go, and there's that little break right there. That's where Shaggy lives. So like, like dude, if you're gonna do it, you gotta go up and down, up and down. <laughs> Scooby-Doo! <laughs> what did Scooby Snacks taste like? You know what's funny is that uh, when we did the movie, um, they came to me and said, what do you want? And they put it together with oats and um, they tasted terrible. <laughs> Woo! The Warner Brothers Animation Dance Party is on and popping. It's a great time here. I'm in the spirit of Comic-Con. These kids are teaching me how to do it. Bugs Bunny is getting his groove on. What more can I say? Albert Lawrence here at Comic-Con 2010, and I've gone completely buggy!